So our first thing that we're going to be talking about today is prepping yourself with safety gear. And it seems like a lot. And I do want to tell you guys up front, this is stressful. And you have to just get into the groove of it and figure out how you're going to do it. But once you do initially get into it, it's like second nature, just like anything else, like starting a new job or, you know, moving into a new house. You figure out where things are and how to do it. So first of all, one of the most important things and seems to be a big issue with everybody is fogging up of glasses, et cetera. A lot of us wear glasses to work. And so I have this nice little thing that I got on Amazon that is an anti-fog cloth. This is really easy to use and you can use it on everything. So um, I'm gonna prep my glasses first for you guys. Just, just to, it's just a regular cloth that can be reused over and over again. So I do that first, nice. And then I'm gonna use that again. I'm gonna put it back in here right now. And then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on my N95. I had this on a little earlier as you guys saw. So I'm just gonna reuse this one. Um, you can use N95s more than once. You can wear it for a couple days if you want, as long as the exterior doesn't get dirty. And what you wanna do is at nighttime, you just wanna throw it into a paper bag. Paper bag is the best, it's breathable and um, it will stay clean for the next time you want to use it. And this is how you put on any of your masks, not just uh, an KN95 or an N95 or a surgical mask or your cloth mask that you wear to the grocery store. You put it on one ear first and you put it on the other ear like this and then you just touch this part up here. And the best way to know that this is working is that you have this action. It sucks in. That means that you have a good seal around here. Now, sometimes what I have to do with issues with the shield is once in a while with my glasses is I have to tape the bridge of my nose. So we'll see if I get any um, fog here today. Sometimes with humidity, you have that issue. So I'll just use a little bit of medical tape, but um, you can use you know, paper tape or whatever your skin is okay with. I also brought today we have different masks, but we also have different shields. So I'm going to show you a few of the shields that you can, um, they're going to probably give you this one at work, which has this foam piece on it here, which goes against your forehead. And most shows that you work on, they want this area to be covered. They don't want any aerosols or anything coming in this way. Now, the bottom is also open, but you have a mask on for that area. So that's what they're anticipating that you'll be safe that way. So you just put it on your forehead and pull it over like this and you wear it down like that. There you go. Now you're safe. The problem is, is that one of the big issues that people have is that there's a lot of glare when you have your lights and you have glare coming in this way, it can be a problem. So you have to be really patient with yourself on doing any hair work, any makeup application. This one I feel is a little bit too like wiggly for me. So I don't use this one quite as often. I have this one that I like a lot. It has glasses attached to it. So it fits on right over my glasses. This one goes a little bit closer to my face and it's not quite as wiggly. So I feel like this one is a little bit easier for me to use. Sometimes the white mask can cause a glare as well. And you can put a darker mask over the top of it, like a little t-shirt mask or something very light, like in a dark tone, like usually black, that helps a little bit. And you don't have too much of an issue with breathing in and out. So this is very comfortable. I don't have any issues with this. There's uh, another... what's, what's that one called? This one, I don't know what it's called, but you can get these, you can get these at, um, friends or at Nigel. All of these masks you can get, I mean, these, this one and this one, you can get at friends and Nigel. This is the one they're going to give you at work when you show up, this one. The other thing is that if you do bring in a different shield, they have to usually approve it. And some shows approve the Z shield, which goes around your neck like this. This is really nice to wear because it's not, you can kind of take it down like this if you're working and you can put it up. The only thing is that some shows are gonna have an issue with any kind of aerosol that comes in the top up here. 
This is kind of nice too for your actors to wear when they can't wear anything on set because it doesn't touch the hair or the makeup. Um, this is a popular shield though. This is a very popular to wear, but you just have to make sure that it's safe for the work that you're doing and the shows will approve it. This is the other shield that I like a lot too. Oh, this is the one that you guys saw in the uh, emails for this course. Yes, this one is, um, oops, there's a little safety button there. Um, so this one is really great. Um, I ended up, my husband put these little um, knobs on here. And a lot of times your ears get really sore after wearing masks all day. So that is a little knob that I can put my mask over. So this goes on over like this. I can fit my glasses right inside like this. Sometimes it takes a minute. And that way I don't get as much glare with this one because there's no light coming in this way. It's straight up against my face. And then I can take, when I put those little knobs on there, I can take my mask and just put it over the top there. And then my ears don't get as sore during the day because you're gonna be wearing this for upwards of like six hours. And then you could probably take a break for lunch or whatever, but you have to wear it all the time, especially on set when you're working in red zone or zone A, those are the two top ones. You can see that my glasses are getting a little foggy now. So you probably want to take and use the anti-fog cloth again. That helps a lot just to go on the inside. And sometimes, let me just take this off again. Sometimes um, it has to do with the, the area that you're in. Like it could be a little bit humid. It could be a little bit uh, cooler. There could be air conditioning and that could cause some fogging too. Just be patient. Tatiana wants to know where you got that mask. This that mask just... is from Amazon. You can just look up shield mask and it should, it should come up. Um, they're in different colors. The blue, I don't feel like the blue has ever really affected, you know, my issues with uh, color or anything. So uh, color like bounce back or anything. So, um, but I got to tell you the anti-fog mask helps tremendously. This one is a little bit more, you know, <laughs> hardcore looking. It's a little bit um, motocross or, you know, Darth Vader-y. A lot of people say, oh, you're Darth Vader mask. But um, I like this one a lot. It's very comfortable to wear all day. And it has, you know, it has the uh, seal all around your eyes, which it seems that there is some, um, some studies that have been shown that your eyes are mucous membranes as well. And so you want to protect your eyes. Now, whether that's wearing glasses or wearing a shield, um, sometimes the glasses are enough. Uh, Aaron, I, I would like to point out that, that the blue one there, the one in your hand, is made by a company called Jackson Safety. That's right. This is a Jackson Safety shield. J-A-C-K-S-O-N Safety. So if you just search Amazon, Shield, Jackson Safety, these will pop right now, up. These are, um, these are not as inexpensive as these. These are, you know, 10 bucks or something, $6. These are like $50. But like a lot of people I know, I think Howard Berger wears one of these. Um, my husband has a hard time, Mike has a hard time wearing this. He has a bigger head than I do. Um, but some people that have bigger heads find these to be very comfortable. So it kind of, a lot of this is fit. You know, a lot of people really like this one. There's so many shields though. So I feel like if you can find something that's comfortable and it's approved by your show, then just go for that. Also, um, you know, a lot of times you can kind of see, I've worn this one quite a bit and there's like a little bit of like, there's like a dent here and there's like some scratches. So I probably won't wear this one again. I'll probably get rid of this one and the front part anyways and put a new one on. So what we always want to do, always, 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 in between anything we do, is hand sanitizer. And so you want to spray your hands all the way around. Rub them up. Thumbs, wrists, everything. This is your, <laughs> this is your thing you're going to do all day long. It's going to you know, make your hands, it can make your hands a little bit dry. So this is um, hands down hand refresher, which has a lot of aloe in it. And so it's very uh, soothing to your hands. 
I've used other hand sanitizers before and it can really dry your cuticles and it can be kind of a nightmare. But you do want to use hand sanitizer that's above 70% um, alcohol, ethyl alcohol, because it is really important. That's what cleans and kills the germs and viruses. There's also um, another one that I like using a lot too, which is the, um, the PPE brand. It has the same thing, the aloe in it. It comes in a lot of different great smells. Um, this one is spearmint scented. There's an, a grapefruit one. There's a lavender one, um, as well as hands down also has um, lavender, lemongrass, and um, also clove, which they made for me because I like clove smell so much. <laughs> um, but these are really great, and um, you can spray your surfaces with them as well because they are the right percentage. This is 74% 74, 74 ethanol, and this one is 70%. So you're in good shape with that percentage. Most hand sanitizers are going to be that, but you, you do find some once in a while that are just like the little, um, you know, like a Purell or something, and it's like 63%, so you don't want to do that. So anytime you're going back to your station, just hand sanitize. It's just the best way to do it. You don't necessarily have to wear gloves to do application unless the actor requests it. Sometimes actors will be like, I really want you to wear them. And sometimes I'll wear gloves when I'm doing like any kind of eye work, any kind of, um, you know, like doing um, eyelashes or something like that. I will do that. But um, for the most part, um, you don't have to wear gloves as long as you're cleaning your hands. Also, a little side note about washing your hands. You want to wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water for 20 seconds once an hour. It seems like a lot, but you get into the routine of it. There are usually just going to be like safety uh, stations on set where you can wash your hands. There'll be someone coming around once in a while and saying like, it's been an hour, everybody wash your hands, go over and do it. And as a boss, as somebody that's a department head, I always do it because other people will follow what you're doing. So make sure to do that. It's really important. So you wash your hands, 20 seconds, sing happy birthday, whatever you need to do. And then same thing, thumbs, wrists, hands like this with soap, wash them, dry them, don't touch anything on the way out. And that's the best way to wash your hands. The final mask that I want to show you is something that you'll probably be wearing a lot of is the surgical mask, which is very comfortable to wear, and I'll show you how to put that on. It's the same way. Loop your ear first, then your second ear. Pull this down under your chin. And you wanna try not to touch the outside quite too much, and you wanna try and adjust it right away. So there's a little piece of wire up here, and there you go. And it's really, that is a very easy one to breathe through. So this is the other mask that you're going to be asked to wear at work, which is uh, the surgical mask, or you'll be wearing the KN KN95. I don't mind wearing the masks at all anyways, because it gives me a little bit of freedom to, um, you know, be around people that maybe might have a cold or allergies or whatever. I mean, this is pre-COVID. I would, I would have liked to have worn a mask anyways, and now I feel a little more comfortable wearing one. Um, but these are, these are very comfortable to wear. They don't push down on your nose or anything like that. Okay, great. Well, we have a few questions. John has an issue with N95 masks. It's hard for him to breathe. So can you use homemade cloth masks on a set? Are they accepting those? They are not accepting cloth masks on set. Um, you might be able to wear one of these masks with a cloth one over, so you're doubling up on your masks or wearing two of these. It's going to be your standard procedure and they won't let you wear a cloth mask on set. Sometimes um, they'll let you wear ones that they provide for you if it's, I, I think um, Disney is doing a, a cloth mask, but it's very similar. It's a, it's a thick cloth mask and it's thicker than, the, than this one, but they'll probably let you wear this one. These are kind of your two options. Another mask question, this is from Michelle. How do you feel about double masks? You did mention that just a moment ago, but she was thinking of wearing uh, like her dentist surgical mask over an N95. You can wear two masks if you want. If that's what makes you feel comfortable, you can. Um, I've worn um, one of these surgical masks with a cloth mask over it before, and that helps with a little bit of the glare. Um, but you can wear two masks. These ones are really comfortable to wear two of, or you can wear 
your cloth one over it. It's, it's, it's up to you. Great. And we have a hack that might be helpful for those of you watching. Sean says you can remove dents from face shields by heating it carefully a bit with a heat gun. Yes. You can use it to, um, you can heat it with a heat gun or actually a blow dryer. I have one other uh, shield I was going to show you that I think is really wild, but um, this one I got, I thought it might be kind of great for outdoors. <laughs> this one is crazy, but it's, um, it, you, you heat it with a heat, uh, with, a, with just like a regular blow dryer. And this one is like, it, it attaches over this way and this, it zips off for cleaning. And the one thing that's kind of cool about this is that it does reduce glare. So because you're not getting any light in this way, but this one is you blow dry it and, it, and you bend it like this and, that, and that's what gives it the shape. You can use a heat gun. The only thing is, is you have to be very careful. You have to be very careful with um, these ones, this one and this one, because they are like a little, they're like vellum. They're, they're very lightweight. So you just have to go very carefully at, uh, if you're gonna use a heat gun on it. Okay, but we yeah, have a few, tip. a few more questions here before we move on to the next phase of things. Sec Secureless, I, I hope I'm saying your name right. Secureless0512 wants to know, in your opinion, what's the easiest mask to breathe through? The easiest mask to breathe through is the one that's gonna keep me safe. So I guess, I've gotten used to wearing the N95 and um, the, the surgical one is, is, I think, easier to breathe through. You can get more air that way. But honestly, um, it's kind of whatever your work is going to tell you you have to wear. It's that level. It's wear it or you don't work. So you, I would suggest practicing at home with it, wearing it at home and wearing all your gear at home. Don't try and do this day one of working because I have an incredibly high tolerance for stress and for being flexible and for um, rolling with the punches and all that stuff. And the first day that I worked, I felt very, I had a lot of anxiety. And I, I, even though I had practiced with this stuff at home, I felt very overwhelmed, like, oh my gosh, my team, are they safe? I felt a lot of responsibility. And there was a little bit of like fogging in my, in my gear and it really initially does kind of freak you out. So I suggest practice at home. Wear it at home for a couple hours. Like, I'm not kidding, like a couple hours, wear it, wear it around and see what works best for you. It's, it's only gonna benefit you in the long run to be wearing something like this and practicing with it at home. Great, we have just a couple more questions. Uh, this is about the lens cleaner you were using earlier. Can you pull that out? Um, uh, Tatiana wanted to know, will that work on any type of glasses, like say sunglasses? Yes, this works on everything. It works on shields, it works on, it works on glasses, it works on um, sunglasses. This is on Amazon. Um, it's very inexpensive, I think it's $6, and you can reuse it over and over again. Um, also, there is uh, lots of different anti-fogging things on Amazon or even at your grocery store, they have things like that. On that on that point, Gina wants to know, did you ever use Nerd Wax? Have you ever heard of Nerd Wax for anti-fogging? I mean, I've, I've used different kinds of waxes for when I scuba dive on my mask. I've used wax before, but yeah, you can use that too. But I would suggest doing that, using the, the wax type of application well before you get to work. You're gonna have so much to do when you set up every morning. I would suggest doing that before you come to work or maybe at night or something to, to prep your glasses. This is from Banshee Ghoul. Is a full or a half mask respirator allowed? Uh, that's what I use for whenever I'm outside. You can use respirators and I don't know enough about it from uh, of which cartridges you need, but I think it's the one with the, for oil paints. Uh, there's a specific cartridge that you need to be using, which I think is a. I think they are the same kind of the the 95 series, um, but you need to check and make sure that you have the right cartridges. That's all. It's um, you can use it. I don't necessarily know that they're going to let you wear that. Use that on set. Great. And Tatiana, I think this is a uh, regarding uh, hand washing, frequent hand washing. Tatiana uh, wants to know what about shoots outdoors. I have a shoot in the desert coming up. 
and we won't be anywhere near bathrooms. Um, there'll be, of course, porta potties, but what would you suggest? Usually, nowadays, they have portable hand washing stations, just like at Coachella or what, like any kind of outdoor event that you go to. They usually have, most of the time, they're going to have a, a, quite a few hand washing stations near to where you are. So you'll be able to go up. It has like a pump, a pump situation where you put soap hand, and you hand wash, you dry your hands, you throw away the towel. Most shows, I haven't been on any shows that don't have those. I've been on about three or four different sets since um, everything kind of opened back up again. And everyone has one. There's like usually one outside your makeup trailer. There's usually one on set, at least one on set, maybe two. Um, if you don't have it, you got to use the hand sanitizer. That's what, that's what helps a lot. Um, you can also use the, um, you know, these are like the 75% alcohol wipes. These are really great. These are kind of an off brand. You can get them at Daiso. You can get them from Friends or Nigel. And these are great wipes as well. We, your 70% alcohol and above is going to be your friend through this entire crisis. <laughs> you can use it for everything. So the wipes are kind of a nice way to go about, you know, wiping your hands, wiping surfaces if you're on set. But more than likely, you're going to have a hand washing station on set. So Eric wants to know uh, if certain productions do not provide the N95s uh, and only provide the surgical masks, is that cool? So most shows are going to provide your PPE to you. And at the minimum, it's going to be a surgical mask, the blue ones. And so that's, that's your minimum amount that they'll give, they'll give you. And then you can wear a cloth one over it if you want to, which sometimes they also provide the cloth ones. Some shows will provide the KN95s. Um, there are some shows that won't give you a KN95, but they'll let you wear one if you want to provide it yourself. So it's a lot of like a lot of learning and a lot of reading the rules and going off of what each show wants you to do. But at the very minimum, they're going to be giving you a, a surgical mask. And if they don't give you one, not sure if you should be working. Uh, that's kind of a, a given. You need to be wearing a mask. And you can get masks at almost everywhere now. You can almost get, you can get them at CVS. You can get them at Friends, Nigel. You can get them like online. And they're fairly accessible. And you should always be wearing one, especially around actors. Fabulous. And just two more questions here. Uh, this one is from Anton, talking about hand sanitizers. Does Jao Refresher work? Uh, that's J-A-O. Refresher hand sanitizer. Have you ever heard about that? Oh, yeah. I just was going to check and see. I think it's fine. Yeah, I think that uh, Jow's hand sanitizer is great. Um, I think it has the right number of uh, the ethanol alcohol um, or the isopropyl alcohol. I think it's above 70%. Um, and uh, it's harder to find nowadays because a lot of people went out and bought it out. So they're having a hard time restocking Jow. But yeah, anything, that's, that's a great. Product. Okay, I'm actually on their site right now, and it looks like it's 65% ethyl alcohol. Okay. So would you say that's so a So I'd no? say Jow is probably not the best way to go. So this one is just your regular Target brand hand sanitizer. This one has aloe in it as well. It's a, ethyl alcohol 70%. This is less expensive than Jow. This one is very similar to Jow. It's very reasonably priced. It's like, I think, 6 or $8 a bottle. I think Jow is $12 for a small bottle that's like this size. So this one is going to be a very similar thing. I would say that anything is better than nothing. But 70% and above is much a much better percentage for, for keeping your hands clean and for getting rid of bacteria and viruses. OK, this is from Rika. Rika is asking, can we use the glasses for drilling as a replacement for a face shield? Glasses like these glasses? I don't know what that means. Do you mean like? Uh, Safety goggles? Uh, you can um, use them. Um, let me see. I do have a pair of safety goggles here as well that you can use. Some shows are going to be fine with you wearing goggles and not wearing a shield. 
but most shows are going to make you wear a shield. So if you're working maybe in a makeup effects shop, uh, you might be able to get away with wearing goggles because you're kind of going to be very separated in different tables. But when you're on set, even though there's going to be a maximum amount of people that are going to be on set, I think the number is 30, you're still going to be around a lot of people. So you're going to be having to wear the shield because you're working with actors. So I would say these are fine when you're by yourself. This, this would be OK. Fabulous. And uh, there's a final statement. Gina wanted to clarify that nerd wax is a soft wax that you put on the rim of glasses so that they don't slip down the bridge of your nose from sweat. Oh, Gina, that's a great suggestion. I love that. I think we need to get some nerd wax. If it's, it's, so it's supposed to be for slipping, so your glasses don't slip down your nose. I was having that issue, actually. I was finishing a movie called The Prom. Uh, it was a Netflix show that we, that was one of the first productions in the U.S. that went back. And um, I was having such an issue with my glasses. I was like putting bands on my head and I, I could have used that. So I'll have to check it out. Thanks for the tip.